My old computer setup was a giant mess, but recently I've added a rack mount system to tidy it all up. In this video, I'll be adding a new case, the Silverstone RM22312 for my DIY NAS. Be sure to watch all the way to the end because I'm going to go along the complete build as well. You're not going to want to miss this. My starter NAS, the Asus Tor Drive Store 2 Lite, wasn't cutting it anymore and I wanted to future proof my system. I decided to use a Dell 3630 computer which I got for $100 and I've been using it as an Unraid NAS and Plex Media Sharing Storage Backup for video files, movies and more. You might be asking if you're new to this stuff, what is a NAS? A NAS is a network attached storage, a dedicated storage device connected to a home or business network that allows multiple users to store, retrieve and share data. It typically includes multiple hard drives for redundancy and storage. Well, I personally got a NAS just to one, back up all my storage and just have a nice centralized location where I can keep all my photos and videos, but I also wanted a way to stream movies and stuff to my TV to kind of eliminate any reason to pay for a dedicated streaming service. But after my Asus Store 2 drive wasn't really cutting it, I decided it was time to switch to a more serious dedicated hardware for my NAS. And for this operating system, I decided to choose Unraid. Unraid is a Linux based NAS operating system that allows you to mix and match drive sizes, run virtual machines, and use Docker containers for various applications. The best part is you can run it on virtually any hardware or any old PC parts that you might have lying around. In fact, that's what I did with this computer. So if you think that this could fit you, use my link below to help support the channel. Now, if you've been following this channel, you would know that I'm in the process of building a rack mounted home lab system. Previously, Silverstone sent me a 4U RM44 case for my PC that I used to edit videos and game on and work from. So go check out that video if you're interested in that. I have a whole video detailing that build and process. Anyways, let's talk about my hardware. I had a Dell 3630 computer that I got for $100. And I've been using it as an Unraid NAS Plex Media Sharing Storage Backup for video files, movies, and more. The i9700 is the main reason why I got this computer and it's because it was enough for transcoding media files and I didn't really have any other use for it outside of that. But luckily my friends at Silverstone, they decided to send me a new 2U rack mount server chassis, the RM22312. One reason why I chose this case is because of its 2U factor, taking up minimal space, but that also presented a challenge of its own. I did like the high capacity storage, you can fit up to 12 hot swappable drives in this system. It also has flexibility with motherboard compatibility, so you can fit virtually any consumer motherboard in there, which allows me to upgrade this in the future if I decide to. Now I did run into some design challenges when using this case with my 3630, so let me get into those. First I had to find a power supply unit that would work with this build, so I had to calculate how much wattage running this thing at maximum would be. To do this I had to use PC Parts Picker. After doing some slight calculations, I figured 500 watts is the total power of this build with hard drives and a GPUs, or 400 with full hard drives with no GPU. I also needed to power the hard drive disks via Molex. The back plane on this system has two Molex, two on each single board, probably for a double redundancy power supply unit that they mention on their documentation. I would also only need a power supply unit that has three Molex connections. The back plane's user guide specifies that each Molex port must use a standalone power supply unit cable, no splitting within the back plane itself. This really only left me with two options, the Silverstone Tech FX600 and the Silverstone TX700 Gold. I probably would be leaning more towards the 600 Platinum just because it's a little bit more power efficient. Ultimately, I ended up deciding on using the TX300. I ended up finding the TX300 on eBay for $25 and this should power the system until I upgrade it further down the line. I never properly mounted the power supply unit to this case as well. 
I was planning on making a custom bracket, but I'm fine with just leaving it in the case for now. It really hasn't been an issue. Now, another interesting struggle with this is, is I needed to be able to read the drives. The case uses a special connector on the back plane. Now, originally I ended up buying these other breakout cables for server, just a bunch of disk storage trays or SAS RAID controllers, but it ended up being the wrong one and I had issues with the cable and realized I needed a reverse connection. So I ended up purchasing the Silverstone version to fit the application. I had to turn off hardware virtualization pass through in my BIOS settings to get the motherboard to read the SATA drives with Unraid. And thank you Reddit for solving this problem. I wouldn't have done it without you. Now, obviously with this being a server chassis, heat dissipation is important. Silverstone does include three 80 millimeter hot swappable fans. I knew from the get go that these would be loud, so I thought I would change them. The issue is these fans are made for servers where static pressure is important because it's required to push air through the disk drive space and push it through the other components. Instead of swapping for low noise fans, I had a few Noctua low noise adapter cables that I decided to try. I decided to test them in this system and it did help reduce the noise without affecting temperatures in a too noticeable way. After a few days of testing, I decided that the fan noise was just too much. So I decided to go with one of two different routes in my mind. The first route was to add two 80 millimeter quiet fans and leave one loud fan in the case. In theory, this should alleviate some of the noise. I also thought I could get a fan controller and manually adjust the speed to deal with heat and noise. So I decided to try the Noctua fan controller and run the 80 millimeter fans through that. So far I haven't had any issues and the sound is way more manageable to the point where I can just leave this configuration on 24 seven. Now neither Noctua nor Silverstone will approve of these setups. So consider doing this at your own risk and maybe just kind of take it with a grain of salt considering I'm doing this as well. But it could ultimately lead to a premature hardware failure, which is something you want to avoid when it comes to important things like hard drive disks for backup storage. Overall, this has been a great upgrade for my rack and home lab setup. I'm curious to see how this will continue to evolve. All in all, this has been a great learning experience and it's something I wish I would have started sooner. You know, these are things that I've been dabbling with since I first got into computers, which has been over 20 years ago already, thinking back. and. It's just interesting to see the progression in it as well. And I'm happy with how my home lab has turned out. If you thought that was this video was awesome, consider checking out my other video where I put my editing gaming PC into a different server that I rack mount just above my server. I'm curious to see where this will actually change into the future. I did plan on using a 10 gigabit switch to manage between the two computers and just have faster file transfers between the two. It is a little bit slow with just a one gig connection, but it's not the worst. And usually I just let it run in the background if I need to be moving things. Recently, I backed up all my storage in it. So far, I only have two 20 gigabyte terabytes, one for my main storage and the other one for more backup redundancy. But I do see myself eventually maybe one day filling this up, maybe not. But I guess, yeah, with the 12 hot swappable drives, it just allows you to do that, which is, like I said, the main reason why I went with this case in the first place and its small form factor. So once again, thank you, Silverstone, for sending me this. If anybody has questions on this or just let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have in the comments section below. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you stuck around all the way to the end too. And yeah, like I said, if you like this video and want to see other parts, go check out my channel. We probably have other videos in the future, but also I did rack mount my editing gaming PC into another one right above the system. So go check out that video if you can and uh, subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you're new here on this channel, we just kind of build things and create things. A uh, few other things I'm currently building is arcade cabinet joysticks. 
I'm building a set of those 3D printed. I'm 3D printing a vertical hydroponic tower that actually I've been running and I'm making a video on that as well. I have another idea for a more cinematic Lego build video. So to all my Lego fans who followed, stick around. We got more of that coming as well. So yeah, I'm curious to see what we come up with next. If you wanna see something specific, Drop it in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. So I ended up having to adjust this. The nice thing about this rack is that it is adjustable. Had to have it adjusted so I could fit this new rail on here. Now, uh, I should be able to mount this on here and we should be good to go. This rail system is a lot more secure than their other one. But then again, this whole thing's wobbly and these wheels don't even sit right. You can see they're kind of bent on there. So I'm gonna wanna try to find a way to do that. I'm thinking putting a washer here and then one on the inside as well to kind of make it fit. I'm gonna have to measure the depth of this here. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing to put all this together. And then we'll tighten it back up. So I see what the issue is here is that those were actually welded in. This one was still welded in, but these other ones came loose from weight or whatever from whoever had it before me. That's supposed to be tight on there. So here we go. I got two washers. I'll put one on the bottom and one on the top. It should help keep them more stabilized on there. Good old Fleet Farm. Uh, went to Home Depot and they charged me like 50 bucks for some nuts and bolts when I got enough for these legs for 47 cents. Can't complain about that. So we're pretty much locked in now after that. That change worked exactly like how I thought it would. So we no longer have issues. I'll have to swap out the back ones yet, but then we're done.